All right, ask her. Okay. Whoever she is. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon Grundy or Juggernaut? Who wins? According to Cora, the Juggernaut would destroy Solomon Grundy in a fight. There is nothing Solomon Grundy would be able to do against a powerful heavy hitter like the Juggernaut. Juggernaut would tank everything Grundy throws and beat him easily because characters far weaker were able to beat him. Well, that pretty much settles it, doesn't it? I don't know where you count. Another versus. Um, I, <laughs> we're going to have some powerful beings going up against each other in this one. Yes. One from uh, Marvel, one from DC. Both, well, uh, mine, no, mine's a villain. Yours is. Uh... He's a villain and sometimes he's the anti hero. I had to go deep in the bag of the DC villain universe to go up against your villain. <laughs> and uh, I think I've come up with a good one. Uh, hopefully, some people know him. Um, he made an appearance in the uh, Arkham City uh, video game of the Batman. But uh, I'll reveal mine last. You go ahead. The Juggernaut. Yes. So I had, like I said, I went deep into the bag here. And I went with Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy. Yes. I don't know, too. I, I know I'd seen him in an animated uh, flick, I think, in... Based on what I saw, I was like, dude, this guy's a freaking beast, man. Dude, he's a man. beast, man. I mean, he he has gone up against Superman, Lantern. I mean, yeah. uh, he's gone up against, you know, he, yeah. is, uh, he is a tough cookie because he, he's invulnerable to physical um, magic. Like, he can't be coerced in his mind. Uh, he just, no energy attacks, like, you know, from Martian Manhunter, things like that. He is almost virtually indestructible. Wow. But you say that, and yet Batman always found a way to take him down and Superman. <laughs> but this guy is, I mean, dude, like, it always seemed like in the comic books, he was like 10, 12 feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like I said, man, you're going to put him up against a juggernaut, man. And the juggernaut, like I said. You talk about putting, <laughs> putting guys in any any category uh, whatever we've done up until now with these verses, talk about putting them in the rural setting or the urban. Man, you put these guys in the center of a city, ain't gonna be nothing left. No, I, I looked at it as almost like Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Where it's like, it's a main event time. It's, uh, yeah. And uh, you pick your champion. Yeah. Just, you know, um, Juggernaut, and I pick Solomon Grundy. And... <sighs> I, You know, the way I see it, you'd almost have to have an alien planet that is uninhabited and just drop the two there and but the thing is we want we want them to be able to use because these guys these boys i mean you talking if they're in the middle of the city, they're knocking things down and throwing they can them pick up the other, whole building and, and just slam it on yeah uh, the only thing that worries me about the juggernaut is that once he gets moving oh gosh yeah the, see and and the jugger you the, the the weakness he's got. I don't know about Grundy, but the weakness juggernaut is you got to get the helmet off. Yeah, you got to get the helmet off. Once you get the helmet off, he's susceptible to you know mind control. And yeah, I mean, but Solomon Grundy is just like it's blood force drama, man. right? And you know, and it was always with Batman because I never really read any comic books with Superman and all that. It was just about immobilizing him. Yeah. Because really his strength came from sort of energy, electricity, and that's what like drove him, especially in some of the other comic books. It always kind of varied, okay. but that's what it seemed like his energy came from. Okay. And he was just like, I mean, you could drop a nuclear bomb on him, and it almost made him stronger like the Hulk. So what I'm understanding then is really if, if Juggernaut, if Marco were to get Grundy and take him to the bottom of the ocean and get him away from his power base, 
Possibly, but again, he's not susceptible to fire. Like you could set him on fire, and he just walks out, and he's not yeah. even on fire. You can't freeze him. Right. His his skin doesn't freeze, or whatever the hell it is. I don't know even know his skin. Yeah. I think you drop him in the ocean. I think he's still got enough force to to you know get away from that. Juggernaut would just have to grab him and run and not stop running, smash him against, and hopefully mobilize him enough. Oh, yeah. Well, he could do that all day long. <laughs> yeah, but again, he's going to have to keep running while so he's solving yeah. his trying Because they both have superhuman strength. I, I don't, you know, again, about Grundy, I don't know uh, much about him at all. But I know what Juggernaut, I'm going to, the version I'm going with, I know this is key and critical to a lot of fans and disbelievers and believers out there with comics, is the version I'm going with is probably like the Jim Lee version, the early, late 80s, early 90s. Even up to midnight, not this Earth. I forgot what it was. New, not the new Fifty Two. That's DC. That's this Ultimates. I think it was the Marvel Ultimates where they shrunk them and they made them less. No, forget all that, man. No, no, forget all that. Yeah, we we're talking about the <laughs> the Juggernaut, man. Yeah, and Marco, dude. Oh, I love the Juggernaut. Don't get me wrong. I haven't read a whole lot about him, but I do love him. And he fought what the Hulk to a standstill, didn't he? Yeah, they usually. Yeah, the only problem with that is. Is that the Hulk? Um, you're talking like World War, World Breaker Hulk. Even the Juggernaut. <laughs> well, we're not talking about the Hulk. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's like uh, a three way match between those three. Oh man. Good night. Solomon Grundy to me, I I don't put him up there at Hulk because it's not like really the angrier he gets, the more powerful he gets. Right. Like he's not going to crack the continent or anything like that, but. You are you're definitely gonna have to outsmart him. You go to toe to toe with this guy, you're you're gonna be dead in five minutes. Well, and that's where I have to concede a little bit, you know. With uh, Kane Marco's not the brightest ball, okay? The juggernaut. Yeah, he's he's not too smart. Uh, he, he could do what he does all day long. But see, I I, I really don't. Solomon Grundy has some intelligence, but he's not the smartest guy in the world either. So. Okay. It's like I said, it's just blood force trauma, man. Yeah, both of these guys. Yeah, you know, he's ripping buildings off, slamming them on yeah. the head. He doesn't care what's going on. There's no intelligence to that. No, and so who's... Who's coming out on top? Yeah. I don't... I, I, I dug deep in the bag of tricks. I may have found one that may be one of those fight to a standstill things. Yeah. Yeah, because, I think so. Uh, I'd like to see something like that. Like I said, I mean, I know a little bit about Juggernaut, and I know... Obviously, a little more than that with Solomon Grundy, but uh, I don't know enough to sit here and say it's a definitive, this is the guy that's going to win. Yeah, and I couldn't say. I know a lot about the juggernaut, but I know next to nothing about Grundy. He's so. just, yeah. So, uh, we're going to throw this yeah, to you guys. Yeah, Let us know who you think would come out on top. This is yeah. a, this is another interesting matchup, and that's what we're trying to bring to this whole yeah. versus series. You know, we're going to bring back other ones, but we want to come out with ones. We want to dig deep into the bag of tricks. So. Yeah. We're going to throw it to you guys and let us know. Solomon Grundy or the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut. See you down the road.